Okay. Um, welcome, everyone. We're really excited to do the second webinar in our series of transition webinars. This is Jenny Gibson from the Utah Parent Center. And I have with me today Stephen Lewis from the Salt Lake Community College. Before we get started, I'd just like to mention um, some of the things that we have coming up. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'll just have to mention that I am subbing here today, so so maybe not totally prepared, but <clears throat> but we have kept on May nineteenth a another transition webinar with Susan Loving from the Utah State Office of Education, and she's going to be talking about all kinds of things that those who are working on transition plans in the school setting would need to know, and you would have an opportunity to ask her questions, too. Susan's a very good presenter, and I know you'll participate in that webinar. And then we have a series of web webinars on the IEP process coming up. Um, we will be sending out today um, our flyer on that to all of you, and um, on May 12th will be our first one, and it will be a webinar on assessment and about, about students with disabilities participating in all of the different assessments at school, all of the ones that all of the students take and, and accommodations and how that all works, and very, very important information for parents that you usually don't have access to. And then on May the 21st, we will be having an IEP, an Early Dispute Resolution webinar with um, Glenna Gallo from the State Office of Education and also a representative from the Disability Law Center, Adina Zaradnikova. Then on May 27th, we have a webinar on positive behavioral supports, which will be presented by the Utah Parent Center staff. And so... I see that we have a few of you that are hearing us. Um, we're going to go ahead. Oh, I have to introduce Stephen before we turn the time over to him. Uh, Stephen has a lot of experience that that relates to what we're talking about today. He's He's been in the field of college learning and memory for over 20 years, and he's also been in the mental health field for over 25 years. He has a background in chemical dependency counseling and adolescent adult psychiatric therapy and a master's in applied behavior analysis from California State Stanislaus. Did I say that right? I did. He was hired by the Salt Lake Community College in 1993 as the learning specialist in the Disability Resource Center to serve students with cognitive disabilities. He was also awarded the Donette Rachel White Award for Standing professional from the Brain Injury Association of Utah in 2000, and he's served on their board of directors, and he's now so also a member of the Professional Advisory Board for the Learning Disabilities Association of Utah. So we really appreciate Stephen taking the time to be over here with us, and we'll turn the time over to him. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done this. Uh, I have a group of people here that... Uh, can actually see me, and then there's the rest of you out there who can just see my little trout fishing picture that I'm very proud of. I only fish in the winter because uh, I race road bicycles during the summer, and fishing isn't very good in the winter, so I actually had to capture uh, fish with me. Um, I want to thank the Utah Parent Center for having me come because uh, the more uh, I can help you folks and y'all with uh, getting students, and I'm going to speak primarily about students with learning disabilities today. Um, more I can help you all with uh, the information that you need, uh, the easier it's going to be for me when you get to me, and uh, the, the better prepared you can have your students. Um, I'm a real pragmatic person. Uh, I tell it like it is uh, for good. My boss sometimes maybe doesn't agree with uh, my approach, but uh, I don't like to candy coat things. I like to make sure everybody knows where it stands. and. Um, one of the first things, I'm not going to talk about the specifics of uh, just getting into college or financial aid or things like that. If you want information, um, we can get you my phone number and whatnot. And that part of the situation or that part of the uh, getting started with college is very easy. The more difficult part is um, the uh, 
talking about the differences coming from uh, the K through 12 IDEA uh, and coming into the uh, ADA or Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, and so that's where I'm going to start. Please feel free to uh, ask questions. Um, I believe you type them in, and I'll see them at the bottom, and I'll be uh, happy to stop my presentation where if, if it's not exactly uh, the most pertinent topic at the moment, I'll wait and uh, answer those at the end. But uh, let's first of all talk about ADA versus IDEA. Um, under IDEA, the qualification requirements uh, for being labeled as specific, oh, and let me mention, I will be using the term LD for a person with some sort of cognitive disability other than traumatic brain injury or ADHD, but what we call a specific learning disability, a learning disorder, learning differently, all of those things. Um, quite frankly, I'm from the South, so I say quite frankly, Scarlett, quite a bit, but quite frankly, I don't care what you call it. Uh, we can call it learning whatever. Uh, but what um, what I so I, I just want to make sure you all know that I'm going to be using LD as my major uh, way of identifying these students. Um, the qualifications oftentimes are quite different under IDEA than ADA. Um, <clears throat> uh, the ADA requires a DSM-4 diagnosis. Um, I presented at the International Learning Disability Conference uh, this last. Uh, last spring in February when it was up at the Grand America. Awesome conference. If you can ever go to it, please do. There are some really great presentations there, K through 12 and post-secondary and employment. Uh, but uh, I was presenting and uh, the, uh, the LD uh, chapter president for uh, Los Angeles had never heard the term DSM-4 and I was absolutely blown out of the water. Um, in talking with her, uh, she has only worked with uh, K through 12 students. So when you're getting into the transition time frame, you've, you, we need to start thinking about these DSM-4 diagnoses. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Most school psychologists, when they are doing the evaluations for specific learning disabilities or LD, they do enough uh, docu or, uh, uh, testing that they can actually give a diagnosis. Um, the diagnoses are all numbered. The DSM-4, as I call it, it's uh, the list of disabilities from the shoulders up. Psychiatric disabilities, learning disabilities, ADHD, traumatic brain injury, schizophrenia, the whole, any sort of uh, a disability that occurs in the head. Um, there's also a classification called the ICD-10, International Classification of Disabilities, 10th edition. Um, and that is one, it does include LD, but uh, that is not really what's followed under the ADA. We use the DSM-4. Um, the uh, DSM-4, what that means is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental and Psychiatric Disabilities. Fourth edition, it's actually TR, text revised right now. And I heard the fifth edition is going to be coming out uh, later on this fall. But, and they do change their parameters about how they qualify folks. What the DSM-4 does is uh, it looks at the discrepancy model of testing. Um, and they have a standard of two, they have a, a, a requirement of two standard deviations. Um, and that is the big difference sometimes when I receive documentation, uh, I review all the documentation that comes into Salt Lake Community College for every disability. And oftentimes I get uh, school documentation that would not rise to the level of DSM-4 uh, learning disability uh, might have a one standard deviation. And then we work with the student. We do a lot of working with students and uh, with their primary care physician, with uh, different psychologists and psychiatrists, as well as going back to their uh, high school to work with the uh, school psychologist to try to see if we can't get that type of information where we might be able to qualify a student. Um, the ADA requires documentation be within uh, three years. It needs to be recent um, and identify current limitations. Um, under the Americans with Disabilities Act, uh, we accommodate limitations, not disabilities. So a student with ADHD may have the same limitation as a student with a brain injury, with a psychiatric disability, or with a learning disability would have. They would all have the same 
limitation, which might be processing speed. So for example, all three of those students might get extended test time. Maybe uh, the ADHD student, if they're distractible enough, they might even get a minimal distraction environment. I'm going to go through those in a moment just to let you know we accommodate the limitation, not the disability. The disability gets you through the door, and then we start to look at what the limitations imposed by that disability are. Um, I'm sure you've heard, but the ADA says a disability is a uh, where you are significantly limited in a major life activity. Um, unfortunately, under the ADA, housing is considered a major life activity is <laughs> through lawsuits and such. Um, in the first district court of the Office of Civil Rights is where a lot of these come down. Uh, concentration is considered a major life activity. None of the other courts have decided that. However, usually if one decides it, we carry it over to the other ones. Um, algebra is not a major life activity. Um, math calculation is. So one plus one, two plus two. So you can see where, you know, it, it kind of gets really technical here. Um, we have the backing of the Utah uh, Attorney General um, with any decision where uh, a, a requested accommodation is uh, denied. Um, we have to get it approved for them or our insurance is no good. So trust me, we do approve by them. Um, moving on down this first slide, uh, post-secondary uh, post institutions and the ADA requires adult norms when a student is tested. Um, and this is real important. A lot of times we receive documentation where a, a child, and I use the term child meaning child, in ninth grade was tested. Uh, perhaps the cog is usually the one that was tested in ninth grade. Um, and they only test the achievement uh, in their senior year. So you have child norms, let's say the, the WISC, Wechsler Intelligence Scale for Children, um, and you have it normed against a Woodcock Johnson give it at age 18. Um, those don't match up, um, and, and, and that's not something that, that we would uh, qualify a student under. Uh, they need to be performed, I would say, within a few weeks or a month of one another so we get an accurate picture of where the student's at, what they have, and what they need. The red one, I put this in red because this is the, probably the biggest uh, stumbling block for students getting into us, but the high school IEP generally isn't enough to count as documentation for college unless it uh, contains DSM-4 diagnoses and is current. And again, currency is uh, a couple of years or, 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 or more recent. Um, uh, so, that's, so that's one of the things. Now, um, we are getting a lot of uh, good uh, support from uh, the high schools, from the school psychologists. Um, Utah and myself have been working with the uh, Utah Education um, uh, to get the word out to school psychologists to do a DSM-4 diagnosis um, and just throw it on there because that kind of covers our backside, if you know what I mean. Um, and the final uh, little bullet on this is all students with LD do not qualify for all service. A student with a math learning disability, um, which is on the DSM-4 diagnosis, 315.04, I believe, it's either 03 or 04, and you see how they get very specific on these things, um, would not qualify for any accommodation in their English class. But under K through 12, they might get accommodations in every class, like extended test time in every class, even though their specific disability is really only in uh, the area of mathematics. Um, the next slide here, and you're dealing with the most computer inept person on the face of the planet, so deal with me. Katie has been great here helping me out with this. Um, K through 12 might offer services that are not available in post-secondary settings under the Americans with Disabilities Act. And I capitalize that P in post-secondary. I apologize about that. Um, so things like tutoring. Uh, the ADA does not consider tutoring as uh, an accommodation. Uh, however, and I'm going to talk about this, we've got it at the college. Don't worry. We've got tons of it. Um, it is run now by student services, which I'm in student services, and I'm pretty much in charge of the tutoring programs. I don't them, but I guide them. I train them on specific learning disabilities and learning disorders. 
Um, so they're very well versed in this. Course waivers, uh, this is where it gets tricky. Only uh, institution that offers a terminal degree, the first terminal degree is a bachelor's. So at my college, an associate of science, the Board of Regents has not allowed us to do course waivers. We can sometimes do course substitutions, but what we did instead, the major one is math, obviously. What we've done instead of, off, of uh, going to the course substitution, there's about nine different uh, college math classes that you can take at SLCC that will get you your associate of science. They do not all include uh, college algebra. There's statistics, there's business stats, there's uh, quantitative reasoning, which is a whole, which is a real numbers. does have word problems, which oftentimes presents problems, but it is whole numbers, working percentile, gaming theory, things like that. So your students are not necessarily going to have to get through math 1050, which is, of course, the college algebra, which is the dreaded four-letter word of math and the other four-letter word of 1050. Um, late assignments, uh, assignments are due when assignments are due. Uh, as I was just talking outside uh, with the person from the, from the center here, warning, what? End your session in another 30 minutes? Oh, are we still there? Can you still hear me? Uh, it looks like it's going. Oh, it must have been another program. I apologize. Something shot up on my screen here. I believe it was another program uh, that was saying it was going to time itself out in 30 minutes, but I don't think it was Wimba. No, okay. Okay, Katie's come back in to rescue us once again from the dreaded computer. Uh, so, uh, yeah, late assignments. Uh, final grades are due next Tuesday. Um, final grades are due next Tuesday. If you have late assignments... I can't turn my grades in next Tuesday, so therefore there aren't late assignments. Now, uh, oftentimes one of the best services you'll get from the Disability Resource Centers at any college in Utah, if you know the instructors, we'll get with instructors that will work with you. Um, and in fact, I have a student right now who um, requested a late, take, take their final late. One teacher said okay, one teacher said no. And that's where you get uh, it's called academic freedom, and that's where uh, college professors, they actually have the final say in those types of things. We don't attendance waivers. Um, the college uh, policy says any more than three uh, missed classes, you can actually be failed. Very few instructors hold to that level. Um, and even, uh, I have a student that goes in for kidney dialysis. Um, she has missed too many classes in one of her classes where Class participation is part of it, and instead of a failing, what we'll do is we'll give her an incomplete teacher will. The teacher could have failed her, but the teacher will give an incomplete on that class, and she will be able to take the class again, no charge, because she doesn't have a grade yet, and then get the grade for that. But attendance is usually a, a, a very major issue. Um, and there are no lowered expectations. That's probably the thing I want to get across to you all the most, is that uh, post-secondary uh, ed education, um, has stringent requirements to meet mastery at a certain level. And if you don't meet it at that level, whatever level you met it at is the grade you're going to receive. Um, and a lot of students are not prepared for that. They think, oh, well, I have a learning disability. If I get 80%, that's like 100% for everybody else. Well, that's not the case in post-secondary. Um, okay, post-secondary ERCs, uh, we are all about access not success. Students must meet the requirements. College is hard. College is hard for students without disabilities. It's even harder for students with disabilities, and especially with learning disabilities. However, the one advantage students with learning disabilities have uh, is that they know what their strengths and weaknesses are. And my goal, my job is to focus on the strengths I can't do anything about the weaknesses right now. I can't make you have fast processing speed. I can't make you a better reader, perhaps. But there are a multitude of different accommodations we can provide to help overcome those limitations. Um, let's see. Students must meet all requirements regardless of disability limitation. Um, the final little bullet there, 
Uh, in K through 12, fail, I mean, I'm sorry, in post-secondary, failure is an option. I hate to, it, again, I'm very upfront about these things, but I have a lot of my students with learning disabilities fail classes. I have some students with specific math disabilities fail a class, then they audit a class, then they take it again for credit and finally pass it the third time. And that is fairly costly. Um, I try to work with my students, especially ones doing that. I try to get them tuition waivers. I try to help them find ways to pay for things. Um, maybe I can help them get on with book rehab who might pay for books so they don't pay for books one semester. They can pay for that extra class. Um, at Salt Lake Community College, 12 to 18 credits is all the same price. So if you take 12 credits and then audit, let's say, a math class, you can audit that math class as long as you're in 12 credits. You can audit it a couple of times, and it will essentially cost you nothing. Um, and then take it for credit once you feel confident. Um, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so what uh, what are some SLCC DRC service? Let me just talk a little bit about some of these things. Um, SLCC, we have uh, about 11 campuses. Excuse me, I'm in uh, I'm in charge of every one except for our Redwood Road and the South City campus. So I'm in charge of all the small teaching sites. That was one that we used at, at some time. But we have accommodations um, and almost every accommodation at all of our sites. The one thing that we don't have at all of our sites is uh, somebody with computer savvy, because that's me out there, and I definitely don't have that. But I can get somebody out there on a scheduled basis at any of our sites. Um, and uh, we serve, right now, we're serving over 1,800 uh, students. Got about 200 students with learning disabilities going right now. Um, and uh, we are more restrictive uh, regarding documentation than K through 12 because we fall under the Americans with Disabilities Act and we were, we're mandated. Um, everyone I work with in my office, we are very concerned with our students. I enjoy having my students come in and talk to me and know what's up with them. However, we don't baby them. It's college. You don't bring your mom and dad to class. Um, you don't, those, um, in fact, if you're not registered for a class, it's technically illegal for you to be in one of our classrooms or on our campuses for anything other than delivery and pickup. And that's a safety issue and that's an insurance issue, which the state will tell you all about if you, if you want to find out about it. Uh, but we need them, you, that our students need to grow up and they need to uh, function on their own. Some of the things that our students need to know is that we may request a student get updated documentation at his or her own expense. Unlike K through 12, uh, the ADA requires a student, one, self-disclose. That means they got to say, I got something. And then number two, they have to provide documentation that they got something. We do not do that. I will tell you there are a number of schools uh, with graduate training programs in psychology and psychiatry and social work that actually do testing, and they do it for free as part of their student health services. Uh, they do it with graduate students, and the graduate is then are signed off on by a, uh, usually it's a, a licensed clinical psychologist. Um, the U of U, I know, does it. UVU does it, and Utah State does it. Um, I'm not sure that SUU or Dixie does it, but, but you can, th there's ways to get around this, and I'm very creative with this. I'll have a student take a class up at U of U, get the testing, come on back to us, finish up their program with us. They're down from the southern part of the valley. They'll they'll, they'll pick it up down there. So there's a uh, I can be very 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 uh, creative with our ways to help our students. Oftentimes, if a DSM-4 diagnosis was not given under the uh, IEP, um, some therapist in the valley will actually take a look at the documentation, do a couple of short interviews with the student, not do a full battery of testing, rely on the psychologist's testing, and give the diagnoses and then update the current limitations as the student goes along. We do have a question. Uh, let's see here. The question is, can a parent request or require the school district to do a DSM-4 before leaving the district? That is a great question. Um, I, 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 I don't know 
I, I certainly would have every parent request that every time an, uh, a reevaluation is done that a DSM-4 uh, diagnosis is given so that we can create a history of having a disability. That's a new way of qualifying, and you probably haven't heard this, but the ADAAA, the ADAAA, the American Disabilities Act Amendment Act, okay, they're amending it. And nothing ever comes easy. Just as soon as you get comfortable with one thing, they've got to switch it on you. Um, but having a history, okay, uh, would help, again, get you through the front door with the disability. But no matter what, we require the recency of current limitation. So a student with a DSM-4, maybe in ninth grade and again in 12th, and I tell students get t tested on your 12th grade if you can, most most schools are, are doing that. Um, let's say you take five years off, you come back. We do not necessarily need a DSM-4 diagnosis because that's already been established. What we would then need would just be current limitation, okay? And that's, that's a huge difference, on, uh, uh, well, just something new probably, not a big difference, but we want to focus on those current limitations. Um, and in fact, a current Woodcock Johnson, just the standard battery, you can bang one of those out with most therapists, uh, you know, for uh, under a couple of hundred dollars. Um, we're all thankful we don't live on the coast. Uh, the average cost out there is around five grand for uh, an evaluation, about 2,500 for an update. Uh, so thank goodness for living out west where we can get things a little bit more affordable. Uh, I have a list. Uh, of a therapist in the valley that I work with frequently on a daily, weekly basis. I call them, I talk to them, I let them know what's up. I've got a couple that are even doing a little bit of sliding scale um, for the college students because they really like working with our college students because it's a fun, po it's a it's a real fun, dynamic population. I'm so glad I work there. It keeps me young, uh, but those are the types of things that students need to be thought about and forewarned about. Uh, you know, uh, maybe a student gets hooked up with voc rehab, and uh, maybe voc rehab won't uh, do the uh, 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 do the testing form. They say, "Oh, well, you got a recent IEP." Okay, maybe what you do is you have the voc rehab then pay for tuition and books, and with your student loan money, instead of buying that new car, you go out and pay for some testing. Um, maybe you work with us long enough. Maybe you get a student uh, tuition waiver. And instead of spending your Pell Grant on something else, tuition waiver goes to tuition, your Pell Grant or your student loan or whatever goes towards the testing. It's well worth it because um, it will – it opens some doors for you. And I haven't even started talking about the accommodations yet, and we'll get to that in a few moments. Um, students, uh, this, is, this is real, real important. I really want – to emphasize this to K through 12 folks that work with students and that you have the time to sit down with your student after uh, testing is completed. Don't be afraid to discuss the student's strengths and weaknesses with them. Don't be afraid to explain to them what is exactly different about the way they learn. Um, oftentimes I find a student brings me their IEP they bring me in Cock Johnson, their whisk, their waist, all this stuff. And I close the file and say, what do you got? I have a learning disability. What does that mean to you? Well, I get extended test time. Well, why do you get extended test time? Because I have a learning disability. You know, it becomes this circular, not argument, I don't want to call it an argument. It's circular in that... All they know is they have some label. They have this big LD on their forehead that gets them in this special room for English, that gets them in this special room, that gets them a tutor, that gets them an extra study hall, um, and they don't know why they're doing it. Um, I'll oftentimes have to go through that myself, and I don't mind doing that, but the earlier someone knows what their you know, metacognitive strength weaknesses are, the more likely they are to start addressing them and to compensate for them. Um, before they get to us. Um, so you need to know how to take responsibility uh, for yourself. You need to understand your limitations, and you need to be able to explain to uh, anybody, uh, 
how does this accommodation not necessarily make it easier for you? It compensates for a limitation that I have. I didn't put it on here, but one of the other things that I really uh, in, in, encourage folks to do is don't try to have a student that's got ADHD become uh, an accountant, uh, you know, that maybe with hyperactivity, I should have said that, ADHD with hyperactivity, try to become an accountant. Or a person with a learning dis try to get into some engineering program if they have a reading disorder or if they have some, you know, processing speed disorders. Um, I really encourage students that after you take your general studies at Salt Lake Community College, you want to choose a major that you're not going to need accommodations for when you get to a four-year institution. Um, for example, I'll take my, I, I pick on myself. I'm a pretty hyperactive guy. A lot of people say I have ADHD, all capitals. Um, I love my job because I never have to sit down very often. So I'll, uh, maybe I do. Nobody in their right mind would have ever uh, advised me to be a, a computer programmer or to be an accountant. I cannot sit still. Uh, for the folks in this room, I'm constantly grabbing my fingers and moving and, and whatnot. Um, I can't do that. Um, so really in, encourage your students and help guide your students into something that focuses on their strengths. And, you know, dog bless my parents for telling me how to be a good a communicator because that's what I do at my job and that's where my strengths lie. So it's a great, it's a great field for me to be in. But uh, I would put in an office by myself crunching numbers or something like that. Um, students are going to need to know how to get around. They're going to need to know how to be independent, uh, not ask questions every minute of every classroom. Because I have had students that have actually been asked not to come back to class until they can be quiet. Because in, in, in post-secondary education, there's 29 other students that paid the same amount of money as you did. And if, you, if, if the student is continually interrupting, they're being discounted. They're being, you know, they're not getting the full educational experience. And that's part of it. It's, you know, you're not in a special ed classroom. You're in a, um, I guess, mainstream, we'd call it. Um, let's see here. Let's move on to the next. So how does the DRC, how do the DRCs at Salt Lake City help? Now, I'm going to go from kind of the most generic to more specific. The first and probably the best thing that you're going to get from any uh, post-secondary institution is early registration, and that helps us get you into classes with teachers we know. Teachers a lot at the, at the community college level, uh, they have degrees in uh, developmental education or special education. I know our, uh, well, we have a whole developmental education department. Um, developmental writing, developmental math. They have actual masters. A couple of them have PhDs in developmental math. Um, and that helps us not only pick out the right student for the right class, but it also assures that we're going to have your accommodation ready for you the first day of class. If students come in the week before classes and say, oh, I need an alternative text textbook and, um, and we don't have it, like a copy ready to, to, to get to them, it's going to take 10 days, 12 days. It might take 15 days to get that because, we're, you know, we're limited. We don't have just hundreds of people to throw at these things that, that they'll have to be, a, they'll have to be a lot. Likewise, if we don't know um, a student needs a note taker in that class, um, we don't have the forms ready for them to take to the teachers to try to solicit the note taker. Um, so those types of things need to be done. Um, we right now are doing registration for both summer semester and fall semester. We did early registration. We've been doing it for three weeks now for fall semester that doesn't start until September. Okay. So when that student comes in, little Joey over here, he got accommodated uh, testing services uh, and he got alternative text. We know to have that textbook as soon as it comes in the bookstore because they usually change them in fall. Uh, as soon as that textbook comes into the bookstore, that student is notified. That student brings us the book. We help make the uh, alternative text for them. We're trying to make alternative text uh, for our students, just so you know, and I'll explain this in a bit, but uh, the students are going to be able to do it all on their own with scanners and with Kurzweil, and we'll talk about that later. But if you don't know about Kurzweil, it is just awesome. It's an awesome program. 
Second thing, Salt Lake Community College, and we're the only community college that I know of in the entire country that has a learning enrichment program. In fact, I, I'm so glad that I uh, uh, follow, uh, uh, I'm forgetting her first name, but Johnson, who was part of the Woodcock Johnson, who's down at uh, uh, Arizona State down in Tucson, or is that University of Arizona? I think it's University of Arizona. They have a SALT program, about two grand a semester, Strategic Alternative Learning Technique. Um, I have copied that program, and we call it the Learning Enrichment Program. Uh, most community colleges don't do this because we don't have PhD students that can be the uh, what I call academic coach or learning strategist. Um, but the Learning Enrichment Program is available to all students in the Disability Resource Center. It's one-on-one -on -one academic coaching, not tutoring. It's teaching a student to learn better on their own. Uh, my my uh, learning strategists do not know physics, but they certainly know how to help a student learn physics better on their own and become more independent. We have a physics tutoring lab they can go to, uh, but if, if a student is not studying the proper uh, modality, auditory, visual, kinesthetic, um, or if they have long-term memory issues and they're studying for hours at a time, those types of things are what this uh, person uh, works on, the learning strategist works on them with. Um, from study skills, note taking, time management, test taking, memory techniques, um, and it's individualized. We have a number of different assessments. They are not diagnostic assessments. They are just simple, pretty front door, as I call them, questions. You know what they're asking the question about. And we have the sight learning uh, uh, style indicator, which is a real good learning indicator from the Center for Intelligence, something, something in Kansas. Um, we also offer free and open to the public, and I um, am doing it for uh, the itinerous school out at the Jordan uh, campus. I'm doing a private, just for this uh, one gentleman's class, he heard about it somewhere and said, can you do it for us? And so I said, sure, I can, because I'm in charge of that campus. So I'm going to be doing that. It's a study skills shop. If you go to www.slcc.edu forward slash study skills. It's on your handout. Um, you can see those dates. We have them up for summer now. Um, in about a month, they'll be up for fall. And uh, high school students, absolutely, please come to these classes. If you tell me you're coming, I'll get my boss to spring for donuts. I mean, really, uh, this is that metacognitive awareness that students need to, need to know about themselves. Now, I don't diagnose, we don't have that heavy of assessments, but what we do have are little study skills uh, surveys, learning style indicators, memory indicators, and again, they're not, they take them for 10 minutes at the beginning of class and then we discuss them. Those are so helpful for so many of my students that don't have disabilities or learning disabilities. They don't quite rise to that level of learning disability, but they do have some memory problems or they, you know, can never remember a person's name or anything they ever hear, but yet they, you know, they, they, they still try to listen in lectures, you know, which is not a good idea. If you're a visual learner, don't listen in lectures. Hit the tape recorder, one of the easiest accommodations we have. Um, moving on from that, and again, it is free and open to the public. Bring your kids, your spouse, whoever. Um, and I feel, down at Jordan, I happen to be about the furthest west uh, post-secondary institution out there since we're out at Jordan uh, 90th and Bangor, um, I get a lot of uh, just local folks come in and they, they're not even going to take class. They just want to be able to read a newspaper better and, and we help them through that. Okay, the DRC, Salt Lake Community College actually, we offer tutoring. It's not through the DRC. It's not a mandated accommodation. That's called a personal assistant. Um, so. Um, but we have math, accounting, computer, English, and now we even have, I didn't put it on here, biological or the biology sciences labs. Walk-in tutoring, and then uh, my department, we have actually finally got uh, student services to do what's called focus tutoring, where you're assigned a tutor, you meet with them one to two times a week. Okay, now, walk-in tutoring, if you go every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at two o'clock, James Fenton will be your math tutor in the in the tutoring lab. It's like focus tutoring, but there's other people around. Um, our tutors are trained not to do the homework. Never, never, never. They the main goal in tutoring is to make a student independent, teach them how to learn on their own. Um, I do the 
We do the CRLA, College Reading and Learning Association, tutor certification. We go up to level two. Most community colleges only go to level one. Uh, we're going to be the first community college in the country to go to three. The reason that we don't usually go that far is because our students are in and out before they can get all the classes taken and all their requirements done. Um, okay, students with LD are available for accommodations. Now, this is where we get into accommodations based on their limitations. Again, I said all students are not necessarily available for all accommodations. We relate it specifically to you have, not what disabilities have. Um, again, and I say this often and I repeat myself, but students must meet all requirements of the class. The most uh, common accommodation across the country is accommodated testing, either extended test time, minimal distraction. Uh, we don't do readers anymore. We don't have to do readers anymore because we have Kurzweil, a love program that you all need to become familiar with. We also don't do scribes anymore because we have Dragon Natural Speak, the other half of a great program. Uh, students do not have to read through their eyes or write through their hands anymore. Kurzweil will read it to you, Dragon will write it for you out of your mouth, and Kurzweil will get it to you through your ears. And I know I got a couple from room looking at me like I'm from outer space, um, and uh, I'm not, uh, <laughs> but, but uh, I've got students, uh, they buy books. The only time they ever touch their hardcover book is when they take it over to our printing department where they cut the binder off the back of it before we shove it into a scanner. High-speed scanner scans every page. Kurzweil reads every word. You don't understand a word? Stop it. Double-click it. The word comes up, definition, right then and there. Uh, another little tip. Have students look up a word they don't know right then and there. Don't make a word list and look it up later. You want to learn what the meaning of a word is in the context of, what, of when you're reading it. Um, and if you want more information on Kurzweil and Dragon, um, I, I train Dragon on different computers fairly frequently because I go out and do presentations. I can train Dragon to hear my voice and be about 95% accurate in six minutes. Okay? Kurzweil, probably 60 seconds. It's the most even I can do it, and I'll just leave it at that because it is super easy. K-U-R-Z-W-E-I-L. Great program. There's 1,000, 3,000. Get the 3,000. Spend the extra money. It's worth it. Um, when they are students with the Disability Resource Center, we can help them access that via the Internet. Um, and so we have an Internet-based one. Uh, so accommodated testing is the most common accommodation. We do about 2,000 tests a semester in our department, um, and that's minimal distraction or private room. Okay, and don't get me wrong, we'll have a reader, we'll have a scribe if that's what's necessary, if that's what's required. I have some students that can't speak and have no hand mobility, so we have to have a scribe, and it takes a long time. Um, the second most common accommodation is note taker slash I forgot to put the recorder on there, um, but. If a student is not a good note taker, don't worry about it. Just get a tape recorder. Um, note taking is kind of like coordination. You either get it or you don't. It's very difficult to train somebody to be a good note taker because of the three-step processing. You got input, you got processing, you're writing as you're writing, you're listening. Very difficult to do. Um, so note takers, we do a peer note taker. Uh, someone in the class who's already registered, they're motivated. To be in the class, they get a $40 gift certificate at the bookstore. If they take a little note-taking session that we do, they get an extra five bucks. Every student does the extra training. Um, I have a question that just came in. Uh, do you find that the K through 12 schools are preparing students to use Kurzweil? Um, I have not had one student uh, come through K through 12. Well, all my students eventually have come through K through 12. None of them have uh, heard of Kurzweil, much less used it. Um, and it, you can get site licenses that allow you to use it from home. Um, and if you want extra information on that, please email me, Stephen with a V dot Lewis, L E W I S at S L C C dot E D U. I'll get it out to you. Um, it is it is a dynamite program. It's saving a lot of behinds right now, and it really does work. Uh, but we have note takers in there. We use non-carbon required paper. Student takes their notes. 
peels off the paper, gives the copy to the student, boom, bada boom, we're done. In nursing, the students are given pre-note because they have diagrams and drawings on them and, and that anatomical things on them. So what we do is we have, uh, we have an agreement with that department. Students get out of class, take it over there. They make a photocopy of them, boom. They've got notes for the class for that day within a minute after class because we have a code on the, on the computer and everything. Another thing that we do a lot is we liaison with instructors. And um, when I started 15 years ago at the college, we were worried about getting curb cuts, okay? Uh, Ten years ago, we were worried about letting them know that learning disabilities aren't just a bunch of people that are lazy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, we've got them very well trained. The, uh, the old guard is slowly retiring. Thank goodness. <laughs> I love retirement parties and faculty. Um, <laughs> that sounds horrible, but, man, I'm telling you. I had one lady, and this is the God's honest truth, uh, a lady told me, well, I struggled in college because I'm African-American, so a student with a learning disability should struggle too. And I had to rip a final test out of her hands in front of 200 students. It, it was our only class that we ever had that had 200 students. We don't do that anymore. Uh, and I had to take it from her physically with I had the I had the approval from everybody above, but they were all afraid to go do it. Um, but I, I'm not. I really don't care, uh, quite frankly, Scarlett. Um, and anyway, so so the liaison and and again, we're not telling the teachers, oh, let Joey pass. Get, just pass him. Just pass him. That is not it, because if we pass a student, we're setting that up for the next te next class. And, and, and they may not get a teacher that's as nice. And I consider those niceties really not niceties. They're actually the wrong thing to do. We have adaptive equipment. Uh, some people, you know, we have roller balls that are real big. We have big screens. We have screen covers. People can use all sorts of things like that. Assistive technology. And I know some people say, well, what's the difference between adaptive equipment and assistive technology? Adaptive equipment is access to, like, computers and to rooms and such like that. Assistive technology helps people master the material. So things like alternative text, Kurzweil, Dragon Natural Speak. We have screen readers. We have recorders. We even have a thing called Math Talk, where you can verbally put math problems up on a computer screen and manipulate them. Um, do not ask me questions about that one because I have uh, yet to conquer that one. I'm, I can at least for a while now, okay? Um, so, so those are the things that we, that we do at Salt Lake Community College. Um, and uh, like I said, probably one of the best services that you are going to get from us is that we know the instructors. We know how to help a student uh, accentuate their strengths and avoid their weaknesses. Although I avoid every weakness because when you do, uh, when you're in a writing 1010 class, they are in a typing 1010 class, they calculate how many numbers in words per minute you can do. A minute is a minute is a minute is a minute. If you're going into emergency medical technician, I can't get you extended test time for the CPR. Can't do it. You've got to do it, um, you know, because you're going to be in an emergency situation. Um, and there's a number of things that you would never, ever expect have timing related to them, but there are many throughout the throughout different different majors. Um, and so with that, I am going to open up for questions um, and, as I said, hopefully have some answers for you. And leave for you folks out there in Wimba land, um, you just type them. Uh, down in the bottom left, and it should come up on my screen if you would like uh, to ask some questions. And it can be about any disability. Don't worry about this being just for LD because I've been doing this a while. I do have one question that's come in. How can this information about the SLCCDRC be helpful to someone interested in another school? Um, I'm going to move down. The final slide that you're going to see here, these are all the other colleges uh, in, in, in the state. Um, and all of the things that I have mentioned are not necessarily available at all institutions. That is a big, that's something big you'll find. We at the community college have about 70% of all students with disabilities in the state. Most students with disabilities sponsored by Voc Rehab 
uh, go to our school because Voc Rehab wants outcome. They don't want you to go on and get your master's in general studies, <laughs> which, interestingly enough, the University of Utah is now offering an, uh, a bachelor's degree in general studies, which just seems hard to me, but that's okay. Um, but they want results. And so they generally send them to us. And we have more of the programs that do not require math 1050, uh, English 2010, and all the other interdisciplinary type classes. We have a great number of Associate of Applied Sciences. Those don't require all those extra classes. The A in Applied means instead of taking up to math 1050 and English 2010, they put in classes that are relevant to you getting a job. Um, Rad Tech is a great example. You have to take Math 1010, actually Math 1020, Math for uh, Health Sciences, and you have to take English 1010. So you have to write, okay, because you're going to write reports, uh, and you have to take Com 1010, and you have to take one general distribution classes. Every other class is either a Human Anatomy and Physiology class or a Rad Tech class. There's no fluff, just the meat and potatoes on that one. Um, so you have to inquire to each institution. Um, I know in the Valley, I know BYU ha has a lot of the same things we do, institution, lots of money. Uh, they, they, and, and, and quite frankly, uh, BYU is an institution that uh, does do waivers and such. They do a lot more of that than any of the other institutions. Um, and the private institution part of it has, has quite a bit to do with that. Um, but most of the things that I uh, have mentioned, note-taking, accommodated testing, um, maybe a reader, may scribe, uh, those types of things should be available on all campuses. Now, how do you access them? You got to have tight documentation. That's the key there. Just having a doctor write down that Joey has a learning disability, okay, that'll get you to the front door. But what does that mean for current limitations in History 1700? It, you know, if it doesn't tell us anything, probably not going to offer up accommodations for them. Um, extended test time, maybe they would, but they, they probably would not offer up, you know, note takers and such. Okay? I'm not seeing any questions coming in. We're about four minutes away. And again, you can look on the website and uh, you can call that uh, Salt Lake Community College number, 957-4659, and they'll get you to me. Um, and just go ahead and ask for Stephen Lewis. Uh, I'm not saying the other people can't help you, but I like doing it, so I'd just soon have you call me. Okay, uh, with that, we're going to stop, and uh, I'm supposed to tell you that this will be archived somewhere and you will be able to, on the Utah Parent Center website, you will be able to access it. And what it will do, it will pair my voice with the slide that I was showing at that time. Thank you so much.